listeners to the Wind to Win show. I am your host, Zenobia Dean Williams, and today it is my honor and it's my privilege. I am delighted to welcome our guest today. He is a veteran businessman, what we would say a business mogul, having been president of a very prospering and thriving business, moving into entrepreneurship, even in the form of a nonprofit organization. He continues to excel in business. He has overcome the struggles and he experiences triumphs as an entrepreneur. Today, ladies and gentlemen, your life will be changed as you learn the steps, the strategies, the how-tos, the maneuvers of the one, the only veteran business owner, entrepreneur, my friend, ladies and gentlemen, Philip Smith. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So happy to have you. So happy to have you. Thank you very much. Now, Phil, what we do as we start the show, uh, we want to share with everyone, all of our viewers, something about Phil. So let, let's get to know Phil. What is that thing about Phil, that quirky thing, that least known thing about Philip Smith um, that people wouldn't suspect, maybe even family don't even know about you? Share with us. Right. I think something that I remember was being a seven-year-old child and I would lock myself away in my room and I cried Why? because I had this desire to know what life was all about. So at seven years old, I was this deep thinker, you know, um, and it really, you know, as I reflect, it really is... Um, interesting that at such a young age, here I was thinking about the deep things of, of life, life, you know, and so it, it affected me so deeply that I would cry. And I had done that, I couldn't tell you how many times, but I wanted to know what is life? Why are we here? What is this life all about? Those were just my questions. As a child. As a child. Would you say that you're still very much a deep thinker or? Yeah, I am very spiritual, you know, so from that age, you know, so I was the ninth of ten children, and you would hear your sisters and brothers and even your parents talking about God, and I never accepted it, you know, it was as if, okay, I hear you all, but I have to find out for myself, so that was my Thing. Right. You know, I wanted to know for myself who he was. Did he really exist? And it would just, like, you know, I didn't have the answer, so I would cry. <laughs> yeah, I would cry. You needed meaning. I needed meaning. Oh my goodness. So that brings me to one of my initial questions, which was to tell us about Phil. Philip, as a child, um, did you grow in New Providence, a family island? Tell us about your family life. What was your uh, schooling, early education like? Share with us. Okay, so we came up, my father was quite an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So when I was growing up, we had a number of businesses. We had a 16 room hotel, we had a restaurant, we had a bar. <laughs> we had two grocery stores on the same street in Camp Road. We had a hardware store, we had a clothing oh, store, wow. and then we had a sheep farm, you know, like we brought animals in from the island. So that was the type of life, how I came up, and you had to be in, this, you know. So you came home from school, and you changed your clothes, and you went into the business, one of the businesses, and you worked. So, you know, I would hear friends talking about Saturday movies, you know, matinees on Saturday. I never knew what that was because, you know, I would, I, on Saturdays was, was your busiest day. Yes. So you definitely wasn't going to a movie on a Saturday. So every day you came home and you went in to one of those businesses and you worked. My goodness. So, Phil, um, just by the way, which were the businesses? Because, listen, I am so taken aback and amazed right now by that. I had no idea of, about your foundation like that, that mm -hmm. type of um, discipline towards work. But what were some of the businesses that you actually had to go into? What did they choose or select? What did you select? Which ones you preferred to work in? Right, so I worked in the grocery stores. <coughs> the one, so we had one on Campbell where we lived. We lived in a two-story house. Um, 
downstairs was the grocery store and the kitchen okay. and the dining room. And what's interesting, the, the back door to the grocery store was our front door to our kitchen. Okay. And so that's interesting, you know, when I think of what people go through now with what I'm doing, eating, you know, there was something we definitely never experienced because, you know, there you had a grocery store and your kitchen, you could just walk right from your kitchen at any hour of the night into the grocery store. And um, um, so I worked in the grocery store, the one on camp, we had two on camp, one on the corner of Bar 20 and then one where we lived, um, just east, that would have been south of Bar 20. And then I worked in the bar. So, <laughs> Did you choose that one or was it chosen for you? It was chosen for me, okay. you know. Um, and then, of course, we had 16, a 16 room motel. And um, I worked there. Um, and um, sort of grocery stores. And then I would be on the back of the truck when we were taking the animals yeah. to slaughter. I would oh my do that. So. I didn't spend a lot of time. My sisters did the clothing store and, and um, the hardware tube did most of that. I did a coffee very, very little time, but that was it. The grocery store, the, the bar. bar, the restaurant, and, and the motel. Okay. So now, how was it for you being in school? You mentioned that the kind of um, the lifestyle that most kids had at that time. That was not your experience. Did right. you resent that? Did you embrace that? Uh, how was it for you? That's an interesting question. You know, it wasn't something that you resented. Um, I guess because, you know, we grew up that way. So one of our grocery stores, um, you lived upstairs, the dining and kitchen was downstairs. And so, I was born in that house. Okay. And so <laughs> that's just the way it is. That's right? just the way we came up. You you grew, you you were born in the store basically because the store was right there beneath the, 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 the bedrooms, you know. So, you know, from a very young child, you know, I remember we didn't have cash services in those days. Okay. And um, I was able to add the so, you know, I was like a cash register before. <laughs> I could just, as I pulled the items, wow. I could just, I would add them up in my oh head. Oh my goodness, know, so, wow. So, you know, um, some of my family members would write it, but I could just add them up. So I guess that gave me a special gift. A, list, a liking for mathematics, you know, mathematics. So I was able, I had developed that, that ability to just Wow. I could add like you would not believe. It, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. a quick thinker. Yeah. So, so you 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 grew up in this this mm -hmm. discipline, primary school, coming into high school now, mm -hmm. um, adolescence now. I mean, I'm sure you have other interests now. Your mind is expanding. But coming out of high school, did you uh, forward into university or higher level of education at that time? Or did you continue in the family business? Um, what route did you take? What was your ambition? What was your vision for Philip at that time? Okay, so <clears throat> I went to, you like to say, people who go to family, I like to say, I went to the oh, government I high school. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. The government high school. <laughs> so government high school, so when you finished, when, when I graduated, and you took, you call them O-levels, yes. GCE O-levels. O-levels, yes. I OK, yes. cool. So, you know, the BJ, what, what do they call them? JC and GCE. GCE, what do they call now? Um, B BGCSE. BGCSE. <laughs> but we took O-levels. So, um, in order to go into the sixth form, um, where you did A-levels, GCE A-levels, you have to um, get at least five O-levels and with certain grades, and then you could go into sixth form. It was lower six and then upper six. Okay. So I did that, I got sufficient, and I went into lower six. And um, then at the end of lower six in 1975, the school changed, I don't know if you remember, government high was discontinued, and then the College of the Bahamas wow. came. So government high ended, okay? okay? so. Um, that was the very last year, 1975. I just completed um, one year of uh, the A-level. Um, no, 
about exams because it's a two-year course, but one year of the of the of the course. Yes. And so we went from from Government High School, we went to the Teachers Training College. Wow. That's everyone from that class. Yes. It was probably twenty-five of us. We went to the Teachers Training College, but we did the A level A level courses. You didn't do, you know. So um, when I completed that, then my brother Kevin, who you know very well, had a real estate company okay. called <laughs> Regal Bombers. Okay. Regal Bombers. And so that would have been 76. So when I was finished my A level, I went, I didn't go directly off to, to university. I worked with Kevin. Okay. And um, that was quite an experience because Kevin, Kevin was doing very well, and he, um, Kevin just had, he, my father, Kevin, between me and you, Kevin and I, <laughs> I think, inherited um, my father's gift mm -hmm. of, you know, this um, business, you know. Kevin um, was doing quite well, and so I worked with him, and I learned a lot from that business, you mm -hmm. know, just being there. And, um, you know, we were living a good life because Kevin was, like I said, he was doing quite well. And so the end, so I worked with Kevin for two years at Regal Bahamas, a real estate company. And then I went off to university and I did um, the public accounting at Pace University in New York. Love, love from numbers. Yes. So yeah. at that point, was entrepreneurship definitely a goal? I mean, was that definitely a goal from childhood or just like with the spirituality did you think maybe I'll get a job? What, what yeah so I don't think I had thought it through. All I knew at the time when I went to college was that accountants did well. Okay. They, 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 <laughs> because I remember we had um, um, at GA Government High you know people would come by and we'd do a seminar mm -hmm. Would you call it like a career, career right. expo or something like that? That's career fair. That's it. And um, I remember when there, there was one guy that came and he spoke about, he was an accountant and he spoke about accounting. And man, when he said the amount of money he was making, I said, <laughs> I said that's for sold. me. <laughs> yeah, that's for me. I was right? sold. That's good inspiration. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was sold. So that's how I ended up with accounting. Yeah. And so I came back after finishing my degree in public accounting at Pace University, downtown New York, and that's oh, another story. Wow, <laughs> that's wow. Exposure, I, ooh, adventure, ooh. exploration. I live downtown <laughs> Manhattan. Wow. <laughs> I live downtown, and I'm 20 years, 21 years oh, old, you know. Life, I'm, I can unbelievable. imagine. And so I did the accounting exam in New York, <clears throat> and I qualified as a, so, so I finished my degree in 82. Yes. I did it in three and a half years because I had A-levels. And um, then I did the CPA in 84. Mm. I completed the CPA in 1984, and then I completed my two years requirement, um, audit experience. Yes. And so I qualified as an accountant, as a CPA, in 1984, okay? I'm not that old though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, can everybody see you right here? Oh my goodness, no. So in 84, mm -hmm. I completed my accounting degree. Yes. I'm sorry, the CPA, I was quali qualified, certified, qualified CPA. And then I worked with Coops and Lyman. Mm, so you got a job? Yeah, well, I was- you Took the, the job right? Yeah, I was, that's right, mm -hmm. I took the job right. So, and you needed to work with an accounting firm in order to get the experience. You see, you needed that two years time. And so I was there at Cooper's from 80, from 82, right after I came out of college, until 87. So I was there for about five, four to five years. And I really didn't like it. Oh, okay. Oh. Tell us about that. What would, what, what See, what challenge do you have? Okay, know? what I find, I think it's a certain personality. Mm -hmm. When you audit, right? Mm -hmm. What I found is that your head is always, you know, you're constantly mm -hmm. looking at figures, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, oh, that wasn't me. Okay. 
Wow. I did not enjoy oh a car. Mm. Okay. I didn't enjoy it at all. And so started up Gold Circle at 85. Okay, let's let's just let's just get unpacked right in that little space right, right. there. So I started accounting firm yes. in 84 after I graduated from You college. started the accounting firm in 84, 84 yeah. but you worked, um, you, you went into a job situation yeah. and, and because we're speaking to aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners, yeah. we want to really highlight what you said. Mm -hmm. You did accounting, mm -hmm. you were good with numbers so it wasn't far-fetched for you to pursue that. You right. did accounting mm -hmm. because of the number, the salary, that the, the goal, the expectation, Stop. and then you put your hands on it, and you're like, mm. this is you know. Me. And so it makes it makes us want to say to entrepreneurs, like, really be genuine and define what it is you want to do out of your love and gifting, and not necessarily the money. Exactly. So that's a very good point. Um, you know. So had I stayed in accounting, I would have been miserable. You know, because it's your, your work takes up so much of your life, your time. But, and that was where I had to make a decision. So, so. Stay tuned. More life-changing conversation ahead on The Win to Win. But now, a word from our sponsors. Looking to show value to your present customers and clients while attracting new customers? Branded giveaways and contests are today's solution. Save marketing dollars, launch a product, celebrate a business milestone, show customer appreciation, gain subscribers, get maximum exposure, create a buzz, and more. Book a strategy call today, 242-428-7310. The Win to Win wishes to thank all of our sponsors. And now, let's get in and stay in our winning zone with more of The Win to Win. So, started this um, company in 85, Gold Circle, and Kevin, my brother, and Duke, so the three of us, I was the president, Kevin and Duke were there, we were partners. <clears throat> and but I'm still at the counting front. Oh, really? Not? Yeah, I stayed. I stayed. So oh I goodness. was not there. You know, we started this company. And I remember the first job. So we built a house. Yes. The very first house we built in 85. Yes. So for those who don't know, Gold Circle was a real estate company. Yes, real estate, real estate and development. And I remember Kevin and Duke because I was still at. Cougars and Iver, Kevin and Duke worked so hard now. And we had some money left over. We made a nice profit out of our first house, you know. And probably about 30,000, 20, I don't remember when the first was. But then we took that and we put a down payment on a subdivision. Uh, right after the initial? I think it was right after that initial. Okay, so, so, so tell me now. Phil, because mm -hmm. if you if you go and you speak to a business coach or consultant, mm -hmm. I am almost positive that they would not recommend something like that mm -hmm. after your initial. You know, oh, come on, test the market a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, see how things go. But after your first um, sales, first transaction, mm -hmm. it did well. <clears throat> yeah. But to but to shift gears and move into something greater on the next step. Yes. I mean, how, what what was in the mind of, of you all as business owners and? Entrepreneurs, what was the, the mindset behind that? Um, I think, boy, that's an interesting question. You know, how did we move so quickly <coughs> into, oh, that, into that next level? So we were selling real estate mm -hmm. and we were building houses, but, you know, we were building people first, people's lots. Mm -hmm. And this subdivision is called Golden Palm Estate. So we took this money that we had made from uh, the profit, the profits from this house, and put it into as a down payment for uh, the subdivision, which was probably five acres. And we, and how much was it? The price of it? I don't remember, but maybe a hundred thousand. I really don't remember. But we made a down payment, and we started. Golden Palm Estate. Golden Palm Estate, the very first subdivision, 25 lots. Oh, what a blessing. 
So you guys just dream big. That's mm -hmm. that was just your mindset. Yes. Big dreams. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, taking, you know, just like you say, um, taking a rest. Yes. You know, because you know when I think of what I did, so I came here. I was able to make back in the, that, that time at least twenty five thousand dollars a year. You know, you're talking forty, almost 40, 35, 40 years ago. Yes. But I left, no, I left Google's and Libra to go full time to business okay, in, now. in 87. <laughs> yes. And I paid myself $75 a week. Okay. So here I was making over $2,000 a month or 600 whatever that was, <clears throat> a week. And I now moved and paid myself $75 per week. What, a made, what an amazing decision, <clears throat> you know, because, you know, me now moving full time into the business was huge, you know, it, um, you know, like I was before still working with this accounting firm and giving my time after work or however, but that decision was a major, major. And you actually took a risk. You, that's a huge salary cut, yes. an income cut, like, really unimaginable, yes. but you did it because obviously you, you believed in something. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so here, you know, like you were talking about the, taking that bold step with the subdivision, mm -hmm. I took the bold step to, with, to, the, job, with right? the job, yes. right. And um, that, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> You're making me remember some stuff. <laughs> so when we finish that subdivision, we had three hundred thousand dollars cash. We then moved to Sea Beach in the West. Whew, that that boy was That's real profit, right? It was over because Sea Beach, you know, here you had young people, young professionals wanting to move in the West, you know, because you know, want the to West find their the, status now. The West is the mm -hmm. thing, and here we are. I will, I'll never forget. I had about eight accountants, eight to ten of them walking behind me as I, and I say, okay, that's a lot here, it's for you, that is for you. Oh, wow. And so here you, I knew the professional community, you know, the lawyers, the doctors, the accountants, you know, because there wasn't a whole lot of them. And I was able to sell that like you would not believe. And I remember in Sea Beach, there was an area, um, a swamp, two, two areas of swamp, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And this is the other thing about just taking that risk like you were talking about and then being creative and solving yes, whatever problem yes. there is. Because there were two areas and large areas, you know, that was very low lying water, you know. And I remember we had a guy who used to do heavy equipment, great notes. We purchased a property with a hill by Travelers Rest. Wow. You know there's a hill yes, right after you yes, pass Yes, very Traveler. steep slope. Yeah. And we purchased this property. And we cut that hill down. And we took the fill from that property ah. and put it into Sea Beach. Okay? You all were some savvy businessmen though. Mm -hmm. you, you, you had strategy, vision, execution, you... Um, you just, strategy was obviously on top and you had not one brain. You had you, your brother, and another partner. And these minds coming together. There's two brothers. Great. Two, oh, the two, both of those. I'm Kim, oh, my, my brother. Duke is the eldest. So, so I heard you say, though, that you were president of the company, right. but yet you still were functioning as sort of like a sales rep in the midst of it. So you guys kind of like played roles and fulfilled all the roles within the company yourselves. Then. Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, you know, we of course hired people, but mm -hmm. the, leadership role. So, you know, what I, and this is another thing, discovering your gift. Okay. My gift was selling. Wow. All right, it definitely <laughs> was in accounting or administration. Kevin was the administrator. Wow. He was great at that, but my gift oh. was selling. And I discovered oh, it. Oh my goodness, oh, that's, that's what thrills me. Woo. Discovering your gift, my gift was selling. Let me tell you. We had about maybe 8, 10, 12, I don't remember, salespersons yes. in our company. I would outsell all of them together. 
You hear me? Wow. I out to all yeah. of them. That was my gift. Oh my I could just sell and sell and sell. And, and that's it. Okay. Very, very important with a business is sales. Yes. You have to have sales. Otherwise, you don't have a business. You don't what have are a you business. Doing? <laughs> you don't have a business. Right. So someone who it has that gifting to be in charge of that area is key. You have to sell. You have to sell. Well, but, but the fact how you <laughs> were able to discover it, mm -hmm. you had no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, someone you would not have um, applied for that position. Or that's what, that's what you would think I would have been the accountant in the company, exactly. right? Exactly. No, not me. So once you would have discovered this gift for sales, mm -hmm. and and you would have outsold even your staff in this arena, how did that begin to affect or direct what you did with your life after that? Like, how did you find yourself using that gift and, and, and now, but with recognition of it? Okay, the other part of that is an ability, I call it, oh, I love this, <laughs> an ability to genuinely connect with people. Mm, oh, never there forget it is. this. There it is. An ability there to is. genuinely connect. I love that. Okay. See, when you have that, and you know, someone, and I think what it is, is when you treat people well, and um, you have a personality, and then you treat people well, you love people, you know, and then people trust you and love you, yes. you see, so that's wow. trust and love, okay, oh my goodness. trust and love, man, as you do that, oh, mm. you could connect with anyone. See, and Phil, why, why I want to highlight that is because I have found that in speaking to people like you who are consummate professionals and established veterans in business, there's no question about it. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get, I mean, we take the curtains back and look into your mind and hear from you, it's always those um, character, is ideas of character that seem to be the foundation for what causes you to excel. That's we're talking about the wind to win. Your win is what you bring to the table in valuing people. That trust factor. When people think about business, I'm sure a lot of times they're so busy figuring out the business plan, the steps, and the, and the money model that they don't consider their personality, their character. And that's what you're saying. Yes. You, you, you say love and trust. Love Those and are trust. character and value. Love and trust. Love and trust. If you love people and you get them to trust you, yes. you got it. They become your friends, <clears throat> and uh, you know that is something that I and I'm just jumping ahead a little. So I've been in a group called the Young Presidents All in Vision. I don't know if you know this about, <clears throat> but one of the greatest um, experiences I've had in my life was being a member of this group. In yes. order to be a member, you had to your company had to do. When I joined, it was five million a year in sales. Wow. It's probably 10, 20 million now. You had to do at least that amount of sales in your company. You had to be the president of your company, and you had to employ at least 50 persons. Wow. And Ooh, that's a, some masterminds there. Oh. <laughs> well, as chairman, yeah. Franklin Wilson was chairman okay. before me, right? <laughs> and I remember him saying, what happened? The, uh, the international people came. Franklin was chairman of Tenure. Yeah. And they came down. They said, no, 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 that's not the way it's supposed to be done. You're supposed to be chairman for a year. Yeah. And then someone else take over. So Frank said, Philip Smith, you're the next chairman. Really? Yes. He, wow. There was one guy before me. He said, you're the next chairman, and Philip Smith is the next one. So, perfect. So I traveled the world, man. I, pro I was probably the best travel member of that group. And I traveled all over. And um, this ability, man. So you have a guy. I would be sitting next to a guy who would be doing Two billion in sales a year. One of the members, oh, right? Yeah. So we went to Harvard <laughs> every year. I went every year. There was something called YPO, Harvard YPO Harvard President Seminar. Okay. And there would be professors who would who had retired who would come back mm -hmm. for the seminar mm -hmm. because you had 140 of these guys from all over mm -hmm. the world that wow. were just amazing. So I'll be wow. sitting next to a guy and he's doing two billion in sales. in sales, right? When they took the average sales of that group, 140, it was 700 million. Oh so when you took the average, and you just shared and shared, oh it was amazing. God. 
But the point I wanted to make was that even though I was doing my little, maybe 10 million, maybe even less, I don't remember, and there were people, most of them did at least 500 million in sales. Yes. There were those who did billions in sales. But I was never intimidated. Come on now. And why is that? Because I mean, it's just. Okay. I think it all has to do with self esteem. Okay. And I go to a quick story with my son Tim yes. that really will, I think, help to us to understand what I believe self esteem is. Tim went to St. Andrews. He's 27 now. He just became a partner in his um, real estate company. But he went to St. Andrews and he had a, a friend. She, a mother was white, a dad was black. Yes. Or the other way around, I don't remember. And one day he came home and he said, Dad, whatever her name was, when she was with her white friend, she doesn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. She okay. doesn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. And I looked him in the eye. Yes. And I said, I mean, this came from my soul. Right? Yes. Deep, deep. Timothy, nobody on the earth, nobody is yeah. better than you. Nobody. Ooh. Ooh. Man, let me tell you, that game. Oh deep. man. No. I'm receiving that right nobody now. On Trust me. Earth is better than you, Tim. Oh, that's giving me chills. I'm right receiving now. it. I'm telling See, you. See, nobody is better than you. Yes. Hmm. I don't care who they are. Queen Elizabeth? No! Nobody. Nobody. No Nobody. status. Nobody. No stature. Nobody. And see, for black people, man, we have to know that. Because we've been, we've been held on, we've been made to believe that we, sorry about this. No, sir, this is it. This is it. Because if we don't understand our identity, we'll never get out of it. Yeah, man. So, see, the self-esteem issue is what messes us up, causes us not to succeed because we think we cannot do it because we are not as good as the other person. Nobody. Nobody is better than you. All right? And so the example with my son, one of the most confident people today that I know, he got it right there. But there was that opportunity for him to develop self-esteem issues. And I had to touch, hit, hit it, to deal with it right then. Yes. And I dealt with it because it came from my heart and soul. When I told him nobody is better than him. And that is what I believe as I travel the world with these guys doing billions of sales. Most of them white. They were no better than me. No. You did us proud. There's no, you were no better than me. And they understood that, you see? And that's why I could have become their friends. Yes, wow. It's how you showed up at the party. Yes. See, you can't become a friend of someone you worship. Ooh, come on. You can't become their friend. The most you can be is their servant or a little, uh, some type of helper or, yeah. Yes. And if you know, oh and they God. know, I remember I went to South Africa with this group. Apartheid had just finished, and Mandela is out. And they, you know, the South African members arranged these events. So one of the events is where you went to South African homes, and, and they, you know, had dinner with a number of them. Well, I went into a home in South Africa, of course, all whites. And like I said, apartheid is just here. Let me tell you something. That day, if they had not met a black guy who knew that they were no better than him, they met one that day. Yeah. You hear me? And it wasn't me being, um, you know, yeah. boisterous or yeah. just that confidence. That listen. They knew. Yes. That I knew. <laughs> they were no better yeah. than me. It's something about when you have a truth, yes. a revelation. Mm -hmm. Phil, you know, I want to, I want to take us ahead now yes. to a part of your life that speaks to when you discover truth. Just like that truth you discovered, it emanated from you in the presence of the white South Africans. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know about another truth that you took a hold of. 
um, further in life. Um, and it changed everything that I saw you do as a business person. Okay. You spoke about a business that was making multi-millions of dollars. Yeah. And I watch you walk away from that and not seek to rebuild it, mm -hmm. but rather I watched you take on a service position, serving people less fortunate, and you began to like serve in a, in a charity type of situation, something, what happened? I knew you discovered a truth that changed your life. Yes. Tell us about it. Yes, well, okay. Let me just go back to what took place. So we were making millions of dollars every year. We were pulling down millions. And I was partying, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying life. Yes. The Hummer, I had the first year uh, Hummer. The this, the that. Yeah. Couldn't decide which car to drive in the morning. Yeah. The jets, everything. Oh my goodness. And my life took a left turn, you know? So I had overdone it. I lost my discipline. The business suffered. And I got my life back together. It, that was like a two year period where I was really in the just and foolish. After that two years, there was the decision you know, what do you do? Do you continue with the business? Or I strained out to the law at that point. Once I recommitted my life, and guess where I did it? Right in the Ponciana Inn. <laughs> for those who do not know, the Ponciana Inn is a motel hotel, um, family family based, mm -hmm. but it's the place where every sort of personality comes to exactly. chill out. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I was in a room, I spent a night or two there, and I remember that night I said, Lord, come back into my heart because I was saved from 87 to about 97. Then I backslid from 97. It's now 2005. So nine years I was in a backsliding state. And like I said, the last two years, say 2003, 2004, my life was really, had taken a, I was part of it. Okay, so February, Second, 2005, I screamed out to the Lord, what is this life all about? I go back to being seven. Mm, deep thinker. Mm -hmm. I go back to being seven years old. That same question, what is this life all about? Why am I here? And this is after now I've done everything, everything. I had, I was never, when it came to living, I lived. I mean, I would never, let me put it like this, I never asked the price of anything for about 10 years of my life, at least. If I wanted to do it, I did. The jets, the yachts, yes. the whatever, I did. Wow. And so, wow, I really didn't find peace, you know? You see what I'm saying? Yes. And so what I'm thinking is, boy, happiness is not peace. You know, happiness is fleeting. Yeah, it comes and it, you got it. <laughs> it's circumstantial. How do we get to peace? And that is where I was at that morning, thinking about it. And the Lord took me to a verse that said, Seek ye first. So I made a commitment of faith right there at Pontiana mm -hmm. in that room, mm -hmm. back in February 2005. Took me to a verse, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be out of you. And my dear, I said to myself, I said, you know, that question that I had as a seven year old boy, I think if I could get the answer to this, mm -hmm. I can understand what this kingdom is. Yes. I think I have my answer to life. I think I have. And you went for it. And I went for it with all my heart. Mm. God makes no mistakes. My heart. I wanted to become a billionaire. Yes. And let me tell you, Lord forgive me if I'm sorry I'm being. But see, my strategy was I connected with billionaires <coughs> through this group all over the world. 
And my strategy was, as we are friends and we, we're going to do business together, that was my major strategy. But now I'm back. I got my discipline back. But I saw a different road. I saw the kingdom. I saw the kingdom. And I said, I think that's the answer to life. If we could understand this kingdom. So about six months into the study, I was reading books. I remember Sir John Templeton, I was reading his books. And he had this thing about the kingdom. You know, Sir John was the most famous guy from Stock Market. And okay. I knew him. He was in our group at YPO. Now stop this. Yes, he was one of our members. So <laughs> and I was reading his books. And I remember when I went to that verse, yes. um, I believe shortly thereafter, probably six months after reading talks written by Sir John, so many. But Sir John had something in his book. He said that you could understand the kingdom, and that kind of fun, my belief. Um, and so I put on blinders trying to understand mm. the kingdom. And one of the first things I understood was that mercy, like you said earlier, really, that it was mercy, it was love. You know, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was sick, I was in prison. Uh. And as much as you go into one of the least of these, ye have done um, to me. That same Holy Spirit from my life. I said, wait a minute, it's not like doing unto God when you have to go. It is. He didn't say it's like. He said, I, and as much as you do unto one of the least of these, ye have done it to me. I said, I should do unto God. Mm. That got to be the greatest thing on earth. And that is what led me to. Kingdom Mercy Ministries, from Jesus with Love was our motto. And I remember as we started, I was going around in my vehicle, which you probably remember, giving food out. I'd pick up food from persons in the whole service, and we went all over giving food, you know, we just went wow. giving. So I, it was my understanding and belief that I should give. And you give in the right way. See, you're not wanting anything from who you give to. It's unconditional. You don't want no glory. That's the glory got to go to God. Absolutely. Okay. So I want to honor someone trying to honor me now. I don't. So, so, but what I find though that, and I feel the reason why your your ministry was able to to thrive and do so well was because you brought your skill, your experience, your training from childhood to accounting, to working with your brother. The point was you brought management skills to the organization. And there are some entrepreneurs who are seeking to develop an organization that is for nonprofit, for service, and for charity. Yes. But they want to do it some, oftentimes just out of their passion and desire to please God, right. but do not respect the need for management skills. Yes. You were successful because you brought that mm -hmm. to the table. Mm -hmm. And so that is just to say, to encourage somebody whose entrepreneurial idea and, and, and mission is for service, mm -hmm. that they still need to seek and find the means and steps and strategies to manage that organization if it's going to be successful as you did. Well, going back again to what I said, you have to say, say, you see? Even in the launch, Even profit the and service and ministry. Yeah, yeah. Wow. See, because you need that money coming in, all right? And that was what, that same skill that I had, being able, like I said earlier, and I genuinely connected, that people supported us. And that was what has really caused us to thrive in the way that we have, that ability to genuinely connect. You hear me say that a lot. And so we had great support um, from very early, you know, um, where, you know, today we are, you did amazing things. Like I said, most people, they, they operate on an average level, but even what you described in your early business, you guys, you, 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 don't, you didn't take steps, you took leaps yeah. in the next thing. Yeah. And, and I saw that with From Jesus With Love, mm -hmm. because you started out solo, doing it on your own, you would come with the truck, you would unpack things literally with your hands, get on a truck and actually literally unpack these things, and it was 
the most amazing blessing to get that little sticker that said from Jesus with love. It was awesome. And then um, my grandmother and her husband, they had a desire to serve people also um, in, a, in a feeding manner. And the next thing I know, this elderly couple, somehow they got in contact with you and you supported them to do their um, Feed the Lambs ministry in the neighborhood. And the next thing I know is they're driving a vehicle that they had no way of getting, no access, no finances to get. But in order to fulfill their mission, you were able to help them get transportation. And so it was like, would you do, again, you took that same idea of leaping forward. You didn't just stop at you delivering stuff. Right. You still kept big dreams and big vision, mm -hmm. and you fulfilled it. Yes. And so what, what happened now? Because I know from Jesus with love, and now this is the, I, and I know this isn't the end, because are you still the same, Philip? So you're still going to make another leap, I'm sure. Yes. But now, what is happening now? And I'm going to spill the beans before you say it a little bit, because of what I was able to um, see and during the COVID uh, season, that crisis, that uncertainty, that instability that just <coughs> wrecked havoc mm -hmm. on so many of us, on all of us. Yeah. And then I, I go online and there is a, at a cruise ship with these business owners bringing in and helping to facilitate food coming into this country in no little amount. It was phenomenal what you did through this new baby yeah. that we're now going to talk about. Yeah. And, and, and so I want people to know, even as you begin to talk about it, that what you are doing now is changing lives, like right now. Yeah. And, and in the crisis time, it changed lives. People were fed because of a vision that started with you. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah, so check this out. You mentioned the cruise ship, right? The guy who was... Um, President of Royal Caribbean. His name is Michael <laughs> Bailey. Check this out. Check this yeah. out. Michael Bailey, um, Diane Phillips, who does all marketing, she also does marketing for Royal Caribbean. Yeah. Um, well, she brought him and some of his executives to our center, to, and they got online and put them online and had them to pack the food, oh, and it awesome. was amazing. They brought big cake and you cut that cake up. Come to find out, Michael Bailey, and I say this, Michael Bailey and I are twins. You are born the exact same day. <laughs> I say, buddy, show me your, show me some identification. I don't believe it. But you see how God, you know, because we're talking about all this, you know, this genuine connection. Yeah, that's part of it. Boy, God, you know, as you do it in the way that he wants you yes, to do it. Yes, his purpose. Yes, truth, man. you got to be honest. you got to go and give it to all your friends mm -hmm. and your family. But do it in the way that God would want you to do it, and he is going to bless it. So Michael Bailey and I are born the same day, yes. 1958, August 7. Wow. Man, we connected like you would not believe. Right today, just this week. Yeah. <laughs> Great things happening, right? <laughs> the guy is sending. I can tell you how much food it is, but check this out. We don't have enough space oh. to put the food. Oh, I had to call up goodness. Costco. They're helping us. We have great partners. Oh, I had to call up. Um, I'm going to call up Pritchard, but I have to call up um, this friend of mine, Godfrey, helping me pounds in there. But we don't have space. Okay. So let me, let me, I have to ask this. I know that you are prospering and you are productive and fruitful because of the truth that you're walking in. Your intention is a God intention to serve and help people yes. in honor and your connection with God. That's how you connect yes. with God. Yes. However, even in the most intent purpose there are trials and so many wonderful things are happening but I must ask in that journey even in that process from 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 Jesus with love into the harmless feeding network were there any trials that you had to overcome so that you could even be at this point to be in a place where you have so much abundance you have to find room for it were there any trials that that you would have, would have experienced and if so how did you work out of it um I think one problem 
only one trial or challenge that I've had. So we now um, form the board that has other people, other people, 10 to 12 board members. And I don't think there's a more powerful board. These are movers and shakers. And you know, every now and again, I find that you know, the board members do not appreciate mm. the spiritual side. I understand. You see, so I'm a little challenged there sometimes. I, you I know. can see that. Yeah, so, so, you know, every now and again, you say, just be humble. Just be humble. Go and, on with the Okay, and so when you do that, because that is a real issue in business, mm -hmm. um, whether it's that the person doesn't see the spiritual side of your partners or your board, just don't get the same point of view, right. handling conflict within the business, handling that, that type of opposition, mm -hmm. would you say you just humble? humble because of course you're taking a spiritual stand in it, yes. and it always works out. It always works out. I trust God, usually. I trust God because, you know, Particularly when you know the people, their intentions are good. Yes. They just are not seeing it from yes. how you are seeing it. So, yes. honestly, you know, um, just be humble. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out, you know. So that humility, man, and that true, um, unconditional love. Love is unconditional. And, and, and I believe that God is just, you know, you just... God sees everything. Absolutely. I don't think some people understand that. You know, <laughs> they think God don't see or know something. They, 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 they can do some things yeah. that God don't see or know. Yeah. God sees things. And so please him back. Please him. He sees everything. <laughs> Bahamas Feeding Network. Yes. What is next on the agenda? What is next for you? Okay. So where we are today, the government. Um, Start, um, started a, the Baham, I'm sorry, it's called the National Food Distribution Task Force. Mm. The National Food Distribution Task Force. It started in June of last year. June of 2020. 2020. And they have invested so far 36 million. The first day they gave 10 million, 16 million was the first phase. Yes. And then the second phase, 10 million. That was 26 million. The third phase, which ends the end of this month, was another 10 million. So the government is given a total of 36 million. Yes. And the zone leaders, there were like seven of us, who were supposed to put in, government was investing 85%, we were investing 15%. Ah. Now, um, I think they're going to extend it again. Okay. Um, so it's interesting. Um, in that, um, you know, we have just from a um, our budget for this year, <coughs> we already have that in the market. Do you see what I'm oh, saying? That is awesome. Yeah, so, so, you know, it's going well, going very, very well. And um, we, have, we have an amazing group of volunteers, very, very committed, <coughs> you know, and so. We take our volunteers on cruises through Royal Caribbean, you know. We go to the Lutra, for example, take 60, 70 of them. And so what I'm laughing at is because I'm seeing the kingdom in what you're saying. When people look and say, oh, I, you know, oh, Bahamas really never go, I, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to come out and, and serve. And they're just seeing the part that people are in the trenches. You know, they may be sweating and making it happen. But what they don't realize is just like with Christ, when they and the disciples went out there and they were sweating and laboring and probably getting a little hungry at the time. But afterwards, say, if you would have dinner in the upper room, like that, we are here at Brickler, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they would get together and they would have those beautiful times. And that's what you're doing for your people. Mm -hmm. And that makes it exceptional because that's truly the kingdom. Yes. Serving, yes. but you also are blessed in yes. your service. Amen. Yes, that is so true, man. We love them. What I tell them, I say, I love you like I love my kids. Yeah. And I cry. And I say, no. <laughs> because they touch me so deeply, man. You see them like, they are pointing and pointing. And we make sure we show them some good times. Yeah, also we uh, do some really special stuff. So they are family. We are a family. And we really believe that. that and I love them. 
God has done a work with you, starting as a child. He trusted you with the ability of deep thinking so that one day you would deeply think about what is truly the kingdom of God and you are living it and you are prospering in it. Thank you so much. With all your responsibilities and all you had to do, you came here and you sat with us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it helped me to remember things. Yeah, and, you know. it's your story. It's your story and it's a powerful one. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with me with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give it up for Melissa.